Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today I'll be showing you the progress that I've made since the previous multiplayer devlog, which was the first one, so the game is still pretty early on in its development, but I've still made quite a lot of progress since the previous one, so I'm looking forward to showing that to you now, and if you see anything that you think would be a good idea for a tutorial, be sure to let me know down below in the comments. That's it for now, so let's get started. So let's start with what I've done since last time, and then of course we'll look into the code and I'll explain a little bit about how I got it to all work. So first of all, let's make a lobby with host, client, 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 and this hasn't changed at all, I don't think, since last time. So let's just ready everyone up and start the game. So if you remember previously, the only stuff I'd got working in the game was spawning the characters in, having them walk around, and I think I could have them look up and down and you could see the head moving up and down with the animation rigging. I think I'd got that much working, but there was no attacking or anything like that. But that's what I've been working on. We've got health, we've got a hotbar with different abilities, and we've got some animations. They're not great, but they're still there. And I'm playing in the top left right now, so obviously I can run around. And if we look, let's say in the bottom left, you'll see the character there. And I'm going to hit one to cast the spell in my first slot. And that is an instant spell that just shoots off a projectile. And of course you can see that on all the other players too. And when I hit it, it has a one second cooldown that you can see on the hotbar, the icon goes onto a one second cooldown. And this spell is instant. And if I hit that player, the health at the bottom left, you see it will be going down and the spell does 20 damage. And then let's say I switch over to the player in the bottom right and I move over here. They have the same spells for now, but let's say I hit two. So I'll use the second spell and I'm going to aim at the floor. This spell has a channel, so the UI pops up showing the icon of the spell and the name, and it says how long is casting on it, and it's got the cast bar that fills up. And if I go and hit this on the player over here, after channeling it, it does 50 damage. So I've got these two different spells that do roughly the same thing, they're just shooting off projectiles for now. And one has a channel, one doesn't, and then one does more damage, and they summon different projectiles, they have different particle effects, and all that stuff. And then from here, I want to make the spells more interesting, add a lot more of them, and I want the players to pick up the spells rather than just spawning in with them by default. And right now you can't move them around to have them on different keys or do anything like that because I've mainly just been focusing on getting the spell system to work and making it flexible enough so that when I come to create spells down the line, I don't have to rewrite a lot of my code. I think it's now time to go back into Unity and show you how it all works. Here we are inside of the project. But to be honest, pretty much every bit of work I've been doing has been inside the player prefab. So if I go over to my prefabs, and I'll show you in here we've got the player. And the player has now quite a few different components on them to handle all of those things. So I'm going to focus on the spell related scripts because those are the ones that I've been working on the most since last time. We have got the health there, but that's pretty standard just dealing damage and then, you know, some UI that updates the health bar. But if we go to the spell caster, it's more interesting. Uh, we have the ability to read input, so on the owner I subscribe to me pressing different buttons on the action bar, and I get through an integer based on which button I press, and then we go down to handle action bar, and that will just tell the server which spell I'm trying to cast. So both the server and the client know which spells I have equipped, and then I tell the server I want to use spell and then whatever the ID is. And then if we go down to this method, the first line checks to make sure the player actually has the spell they're trying to cast so they can't cheat by trying to cast a spell they don't have. And then we make sure the spell is not on cooldown, if it is we return. And then we also make sure that we're not currently casting a different spell. And finally, if that is the case, then we start casting. And what that does is it goes to the spell and it raises a custom event called casting started. Um, and what that is, is it's to do with Bolt, the visual scripting inside of Unity. So remember this string casting started. If I know, now go into Unity and I go over to my game data spells and we go to the instant spell, the first one, the purple. And we've got over here this mono behavior, which is empty, like it doesn't have anything else on it apart from the spell behavior, which is the script I just showed you, the one with the way to raise the event, and then a bolt visual graph. So if we look here and we edit the graph and I bring it over to my main monitor, you'll see I have this box here for casting. And the first node we have here is a custom event. 
and the custom event, let me try and zoom in, is casting started. So when that line in code gets called, this event will get triggered. And then here is where I put together the logic for the spell. And I'm sure this will get improved over time and I might find ways to group multiple nodes into a single node to save me having so many. But for now this works, all that happens is it puts it on cooldown and I pass in the spell to put on cooldown, which is itself. And then it plays an animation and it plays the attack animation as an RPC. So all the players play the animation and then, well, sorry, all the clients play the animation for my character. And then it launches a projectile and I pass in the prefab for the projectile to launch. And these methods, put on cooldown, launch projectile, play animation, client RPC, I've made these already to be reused by spells because I imagine a lot of spells, pretty much every spell will be put on cooldown. Most will have an animation, if not all. And then launch projectile will be quite a lot of spells. So I've made these methods to be reused by the graphs. And if I close this and I go to the other spell, so the spell that has a channel, it's very similar. Spell behavior with this uh, script machine. But this one has two events. It has casting started and casting completed because it has a casting duration. And what happens is when I hit the button, it will run this and it just starts casting the spell. And then when the casting is completed, this will be raised, just another one of these events called casting completed. And then we'll run the logic for putting it on cooldown, playing an attack animation and launching a projectile. In this case, it's just a different spell to put on cooldown and a different projectile to launch. And then the way this all works with the casting is that on the player we have, if we go back to the player prefab, a casting handler and a cooldown handler, which are very similar um, in terms of they track a certain spell and a timer. But for casting, there is only ever one spell. So if we look up here, we sync a network variable here of type spell casting state which is a current type, uh, sorry, a custom type I've made that stores an integer for the ID of the spell that's casting and a float for when it finishes. And then all that happens is that gets synced to the clients so they can display it on the UI with the little cast bar. Um, if I didn't need the clients to display that on the UI, then I wouldn't even need this. And then we have these events to be raised when uh, the spell casting starts and when it completes. And here is just for the server when it completes. So I can separate out what happens for the clients and what happens for the server. And then all we do is we say, when we start casting, so this is the code on our graph that said start casting, just says, if we're already casting a spell, don't do anything. Otherwise, set the state to be this spell and whatever the current time is, plus how long the spell takes to cast. And then over in the update loop, we just keep checking so long as we're on the server and we are casting, check if that time has passed, if we're past the finish time, and if so, raise the event and cancel out the state. It's a struct, so you can't set it to null, so instead I just set the values to minus one. And you notice this event here, server on spell casting completed, I invoke it, and over in the spell caster, this um, event is here. So what the server does, is it says, okay, go find the spell that finished and call casting completed, which raises the second event. And this allows me to, inside of the graphs, have logic for when I hit the button and also when it finishes casting. And that allows me to say for certain spells that their casting starts later or that they don't even have casting at all. And it's really flexible now. I don't have to change the code. I just need to put inside of the graphs what I want. So if I want an instant spell, I don't even bother with the casting stuff. And if I do, then I just add that little bit in there. And the cooldown handler is pretty much identical to the casting, except it stores a list of spell cooldown state, which for now is the exact same stuff, just an int and a float for the spell and when it's ready. But I have made them separate structs just in case they end up having different logic. Like maybe they end up having uh, an extra field for the spell cooldown state. I don't want them to share the same thing. And then pretty much the same thing. We can put something on cooldown, which just adds it to a list, the network list. And then in the update loop, we just loop over and check the same thing. Has the time passed? If so, remove that spell from our list of spells on cooldown. And then the event down here that uh, handles the on the list updating, that's purely client side for the UI. 
So whenever a spell is added or removed from the list, it will go into here and the client will say, well, we don't care about spells being removed really, but when a spell is added, we raise this event saying on spell cooldown started. And if I hit F12, we go over to the UI, the spell slot display. Let's open this up. And this just handles me putting spells in certain slots, clearing them from the slots. And if we have a spell and it's on cooldown, then we update the cooldown text, change the fill amount. And as soon as it's done, we disable the cooldown text and image and I'll put it all back to normal. So this handles um, updating the text. And I have it here so that if there's more than a second left, then it displays just the second, so three, two, one. But as soon as it's less than one second, it goes into one decimal place. So it'll go 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. And I think that looks a lot better. I am aware that I'm not covering every single line of code because that would take a very long time because this is quite a lot of work. But like I said, if you look at this and you do see anything that you want for a tutorial that you think would make sense. For example, I could build up the spell system from scratch and teach you my thought process the entire way through rather than just skimming over it, then do let me know down below if you want that. And I might actually put a poll out later saying, uh, you know, the different things I've shown off in this video and whether you want tutorials on them. And in case you were curious as to how the spells actually work, like how do I hook it all up with the visual graphs, is that I have a scriptable object for every spell. So for example, this one, and it has the ID, the name, the icon, and all that kind of stuff. And it also has reference to the spell behavior, which is the game object prefab that goes with it. So then in the spell caster, this is how I'm doing it for now, at least. I know it'll probably change when I add the ability to pick up spells. But for now, I have a list of starting spells, which is the scriptable object. And in start on the server, I go over every starting spell, spawn in its spell behavior, and then add it to a list. And then the server is now tracking each of the spells that I have from my starting spells. And of course, this logic inside the for each loop, that will go elsewhere eventually. So when I interact with a spell and pick it up, it will instantiate it, initialize it, and add it. And I also probably want the ability for you to drop a spell to you know make space if you pick up another one. I'll also need the ability to reorder things so you can put a certain spell on a certain key and all the other stuff you'd expect from like an action or hotbar kind of thing. So this will change, but for now, it's really easy for me to just make a new spell and add it to this list in the editor and then just have it work. It's really useful. That's pretty much everything, but I do want to show you one last thing I've made, which is effectively a spell database. It's not quite the same as a standard database, but it does the job, which is that it stores all of the spells in the game and certain mono behaviors will have reference to the spell database, this scriptable object. So they're all referring to the same data. And as long as the server and the client are using the same version of the game, then they can agree on this. And I can tell the server that I want to cast spell ID one or two or whatever. And it will then go here and it'll say, okay, get me the spell with a certain ID and it'll go and find it in this list. And what it allows us to do is just tell the server I want to cast spell two, rather than sending across the entire spell scriptable object when you're saying what to cast, because it's quite inconvenient and it's also sending across much more data. And then you've got to think about how to serialize certain things. When in reality, you just want to make sure they know what you're thinking about. So if I have the fireball spell, which is ID five, and then I say cast spell five, and then once it gets to the server and the server just receives a five, all it needs to do is it needs to go to the spell database, get spell by ID five, and then it has the fireball spell. So yeah, I think that's everything for this video, all about spells, casting, cooldowns, and bolt visual scripting. So if you want any of these in their own standalone tutorial, be sure to let me know down below what you think would be interesting. And by reacting to the poll that I'll put up when this video goes live, Sadly, on YouTube, I think you can only react to one of the options, even if you want to react to multiple. So just pick the one you prefer the most, and I'll try and get around to any of the ones that are popular. I think the next thing I want to work on is making it so spells spawn in the world. Players can run, pick them up, and use them. And then, of course, making more interesting spells. If you like the video, then please leave a like and subscribe. Let me know down below what you want to see next. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.
But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Alan W, Francisco Lira, Sahila, John Jennigan Mills, Benjamin Hilda, David McDermott, Evan Maxey, George Pierce, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, Malvin, Mark McCockle, Mike Miller, Rack, Andrew Williams, Theory, and Dario. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.